Okay, what a film to go out on. <laughs> so this is the last review of uh, Fall Break at the Movies. I wasn't... I was debating whether or not to come out for this one. You know, it's kind of gray out, as you can probably see. And, you know, last day, I was thinking just to stay at home and chill out. But, you know, I decided to come see with this one. You know, it's funny to me how movies can sometimes go in cycles. Or not even cycles, but just similarities. You know, it seems like one year there'll be a release of several films with the same basic plot structure. You know, the best example I can think of is, um, you know, back in the, the early 2000s and whatnot, you had, you know, Deep Impact and Armageddon in the same summer. You know, two movies about a meteor hitting the Earth. And there have been other examples uh, since. But this is like... Just, this is just the second fucking movie I've seen about a woman ghost writing uh, books for her husband in the last freaking month. <laughs> it's just kind of funny how that works. Um, but this one's a lot different than The Wife. First of all, this one is based on a, a true story, apparently. So um, that's always fun to kind of learn some new history. Um, so... It, this one stars uh, Kiara Knightley, and the story is that, you know, Kiara Knightley's character, uh, Claudette, marries this, you know, kind of well-to-do fellow from uh, from Paris um, who has a big French name, but they all, they all call him Willie. Willie has this, you know, this kind of pompous manner and this, you know, standing in the artsy community for being that guy with the razor tongue. He, go, he writes reviews, he writes this, he writes that. But it, as it turns out, and it's not like a big secret, they kind of show you it right off the bat, um, he doesn't actually write anything. He runs what he calls the factory, where he has several ghost writers who write the reviews, write the stories. He goes in, edits them a little bit, and they're all published under his name. Okay. So long story short, um, Claudette ends up writing a novel for him based on her, you know, her youth, and it becomes this big hit. And then more and more and more and more and more. And that's kind of the framing of the story, but the real story is kind of the relationship between Claudette and Willie, which is just bizarre. I, I, you know, in the details, in the again, in the framing, this film bears a lot of similarities to The Wife, but the story it actually is closer to in terms of what it's actually about is probably Professor Marsden and the Wonder Women, wherein these two start out on this bizarre love-hate relationship, culminating in each one of them taking several mistresses and lovers, and, you know, you know there's one point where they're both, you know, fucking the same woman, but, you know, he, you know, Willie is doing it behind Claudette's back. He knows she's doing it. But she doesn't know he's doing it, and then finds out about it. There's at one point where they both take lovers. Uh, Claudette starts to you know, experiment with women, and it even introduces a transgender character, which is interesting. Um, <coughs> so, uh, in in terms of that, in terms of the in, in terms of the the real thrust, no pun intended, of the story, that's where it really is at, is these two constantly in battle with each other for the upper hand. You know, in turn, and you know, in terms of, you know, their choice of sexual partners and how they do it, that's where the similarities to Professor Marsden and the Wonder Woman kind of end, because with Professor Marsden, one of my favorite films of last year, the great thing about that movie is that everything the characters did was an extension of their love for each other. The development of the polygamous relationship, the three-way love between him and his the two women, between the two women and each other, two women for him, um, even into the 
um, the development of the interest in the, the role playing and the bondage games and whatnot, you still always got the feeling, as titillating as it was, that it all stemmed from and was an expression of their love for each other. And that's what made that movie very beautiful. This movie does not have that feeling going for it. You feel like everything they do is done to one-up one another. Okay? Um, looking again at the wife. the Jonathan Price's character in The Wife... Yeah, he was getting rich off his wife's work. But you always got the sense that he wasn't a bad man. He was flawed. But he was not bad. He, he, he did love his wife. You never get the sense ever in this film that Willie and Claudette actually are in love with each other. It never feels like that. He never feels like... Well, you feel like she loves him. I'll give that credit. But you never get the feeling that he loves her, that anything he does is ever out of love for her. And everything he, he seems like... There's one moment where he buys her a, a house in the country because she's from the country and she loves it so much. She doesn't like the city. So he buys her the country so she can write it. And, or buys her the country house. It's about the country. Um, and there's... The way it's presented and the way he does it, you're like, okay, this is nice. This is actually showing that he's doing something for her. But again, almost immediately, it's turned around going... He did this so she could be there to write, and he has all these keys so he can lock her in so when she doesn't want to write, so he locks her in until she does. So, you know, you know, so yeah. Um, even the, the addition of the transgender character, Missy, who becomes uh, Claudette's lover and her, basically her life, her lifetime companion, um, it sounds interesting, and it would be interesting if, again, you felt like the character was introduced to say something about gender politics or um, the, the struggles of someone in that situation, especially in that time period. Um, but it never feels like that. It feels like this character is introduced solely so Kiara Knightley can now one-up <laughs> no, uh, Dominic West. You know that that's you know, and they this isn't and this is not to say that the performance is bad or or anything like that. It's just you know to say that it, that's where the film has a very I don't want to say hateful, but a very kind of negative undertone to it. So all this, all this I'm saying, this would lead you to believe that I hated this film, that I, that I hated. And let me tell you something, that is not true. I fucking loved this movie. This movie was like crack, okay? I don't believe in the term guilty pleasure um, because I, I, I strongly believe that, you know, life is short. Why should you feel guilty about something that gives you pleasure? I mean, listening to a Kanye West song, knowing what a shithead he was, yeah. Or he is, you know, watching an Ilya Kazan movie and knowing how many people he screwed. Okay, yeah, you can feel kind of guilty about that, but you know, because something features a certain storyline or whatever, why feel guilty about it? Enjoy what you enjoy. But if I did believe in guilty pleasures, this film would definitely be one of them. This film, again, with the one-upsmanship, the things they go to, the betrayals, the backstabbings, the uh, you know, the reverses. This film is like Melrose Place if it was written by Oscar Wilde. Seriously. It is such decadent, joyous fun. And I, I don't know if that's what they were going for. That's kind of the weird thing. Is I get the feeling they, they don't... The, the filmmakers, I don't know if they saw it that way. Or if they were really thinking they were telling this story of an evolved woman and taking her place in a man's world. Because it is not coming across like that. That is not how it comes across. It is a, it, like I say, it is a Fox show set in Oscar Wilde universe. And I'm not exaggerating with that writing. That's it, Because that's kind of the time period it's in, uh, the writing, the, the dialogue is so very important and is so crisp and clean and the actors are delivering it so 
so snappy. It's what makes the movie fun. It's what takes it out of, you know, just being another one of these types of movies and going, holy shit, this is, this is enjoyable. Oh my God, I love, you know. It's, it's fucking weird to be like, to be in that kind of position watching a movie. Um, Kiara Knightley is just made for these types of movies. She is, there are certain actors that just do very well in period roles. And Kiara Knightley's best work has always been in some form of period drama. I don't know why that is just her basic look, um, her accent, the way she, she delivers lines. She And she looks so natural and comfortable, as comfortable as one can look, you know, in those period costumes that... You know, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's acting for her. It feel, she feels so natural. Uh, Dominic West is is a lot of fun in this very smarmy role. And it must have been... That must have been a hard role to play. Because the guy is a snake oil salesman from the moment we meet him. And watching it, you can kind of see the actor a little bit in a good way. Kind of trying to play moments where he's caught or he's trying to wiggle out of something. Um, trying to find the difference between when the character is being genuine and when he's making, when he's plotting his next move is, you know, fascinating and, and very difficult to do. I've, I've played characters like that. Not very well, I'll admit. Or at least I don't think so. Um, but I, he really plays it on those, he really is one of those guys, and we've all met them, you know, that truly believes his lies, you know, who is lying, who is doing everything for his own benefit, but believes that he is actually the most wonderful and beautiful man ever, and just can't understand why these people don't see him that way, you know, it's... It's a really, uh, a really, that's a difficult thing to play off, you know. Um, so, so yeah. Again, just, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of what else to say about this movie. I wish I could say more about, again, the, uh, the gender politics and the, like, say, the, the, the very, uh, and I guess historically accurate, which is really fascinating, um, inclusion of the transgender character, which, you know, could not have been easy for him, uh, in that time period. Um, but the, uh, the character, while, again, I don't feel is played as naturally and as, you know, interestingly as he could be, I believe that he is played honestly and written honestly. There's a lot of really good dialogue that he has about, you know, always having to wear girly dresses, especially back then, and then one day putting on his brother's school uniform and feeling at home. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't feel, at least to me, and again, I can't judge it totally, um, but it feels to me like an honest expression of somebody. It does not feel like like a lot of times it does a, a straight guy trying to write a gay or transgender character as they think they should sound. At least to me, the character sounded very, very honest and very, um, you know, very genuine. Um, you just, you just kind of wish like you were ever given indication that Claudette's feelings for him were more than just a, another chess piece to play against her husband, you know? Um, but again, it's, it is decadent, guilty pleasure fun. It was a fun movie. Um, and, and like I say, a fun movie from a, from a story and a filmmaker and a, you know, a production that you didn't expect to kind of have that kind of fun in it. You thought, I felt, I thought going in it was going to be very soapboxy, you know, very kind of stuffy, a little slow, as British films uh, tend to be. But no, it was well, it. Yeah, it it really, like I say, Fox Fox show written by Oscar Wilde, and so uh, that's that was this one. So final grade. Um, I want to give it a lower grade. 
I really kind of do. I feel like if you're talking film quality, that, yeah, um, it kind of deserves that lower grade. You know, the characters aren't very complex. The story isn't as complex as it would like to think and all that. I mean, comparing it to Star is Born, which, you know, boy, howdy. Have I, you know, I've gotten three thumbs down on that one. I never get any reviews on my reviews. I've gotten three thumbs down on that video. I apparently offended some people with my review of Star is Born. But Star is Born had, like, more complex characters and a more interestingly constructed narrative, but it didn't connect with me. It, did, it wasn't fun or wasn't interesting to watch. This was. So with that in mind, I gotta, I gotta give it an A minus. I gotta give it an A minus because it really was just so enjoyable to watch. And, and, and again, an interesting story, and an interesting way to tell the story. I don't want to say that the story is bad or anything like that. It's just a, it's not the way I thought the story was going to be told. And as such, it, it caught you by surprise in a good way and just made you go, "Wow, okay, great." So, uh, so yeah, got, I'm going to say an A minus on this one. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so that was Fall Break at the Movies. Five movies in just about five days. And, uh, boy, what a, what an eclectic group of films I have seen this week. I mean, wow. Uh, all right. So, got to start back at work tomorrow again. Got to get back to the grind. But, you know, we're heading into the later part of the year here, folks, so a lot of these Oscar bait things are coming out, so I'm looking forward to checking out some of these and seeing if we can't pull this year at the movies out of the dumpster it's been in since almost the beginning. Um, so, yeah, so I hope everybody had a good week. Here's to more good weeks to come. And once again, for Chewy, Mr. Chirpy, and Zoe, as always, drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.